Your co-host is here. Oh, my Lord. I was like, I hope she's okay. She's not responding to me. I feel a little nervous. You know, you know how fun it is to talk to yourself. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you just have to remember that there's people out there listening. So, you know, you just kind of go back and forth. But, yeah, hectic morning like it usually is. But Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. That's how I started the show. I said, you know, I planned on being at the show this morning as well, but... Lots of puppies, and we had dogs that needed to go to the vet at the last minute. You know how it is, and you just, everything basically goes to hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can change. Everything can change in an instant. It's like you one thing happens, and you're like, wow, everything just went spun out of control. Like, okay, let me, let me rein this back in. <laughs> so, so tell me, what, what went on with you this morning? Well, I have a couple pups with me in studio today. I, I think I saw some pictures of them. I th- I thought we were taking a little break from this packet. I thought you were taking a little breather. Well, you know, whenever you, when you get that call that there's a bucket of puppies that were left in a park that, you know, when it's freezing cold outside, it just, it's like, okay, where are they at? Time for me to get there, you know, and and that's exactly what happens in rescue all the time. You know, you're, it's constantly, you're like, okay, I think this is the plan. And that's your plan for the day or the week or the month. And then suddenly everything goes out the window and you're like, okay, rerouting, you know? Yes. Oh, yes, I know, I know that feeling. I, I, got the, I got a similar text earlier in the week with, uh, we've been doing actually a lot with Delano uh, Animal Services. Oh, I have seen that. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and they, I don't know what they have out there, but apparently no spay and neuter. <laughs> right. Oh, well, that's a big thing in... Um, Central California, definitely. Yeah. And then uh, I had a huge thing that happened with me yesterday with my own personal girl, sh- girl sugar, but I'll talk to you about that some more, too, as soon as we get back uh, from our commercial break. You're listening to Rescue Radio on CRN Digital Talk. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now. 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. Welcome back to Rescue Radio on CRN Digital Talk. So, Chad, tell me, like, you've had a crazy weekend this or crazy week this week. Also, I've seen you I, all I over have. the place. I, I, I was I was telling before you ran in into the studio <laughs> <laughs> with puppies in hand. <laughs> um, I was saying that you know we got some great media attention um, this week. Because uh, we did, we were able to do Access Hollywood Live. Uh, Access Hollywood. I'm stuttering here. What's going on? Right. And TMZ Live. Um, and we were fortunate to do that with uh, Animal Planet and Discovery Channel because of the Puppy Bowl. Uh, a few months back, we did the commercials for Subaru and Pedigree uh, for the Puppy Bowl that's coming up tomorrow on Animal Planet at 3 p.m. So they wanted to get some promotion out there with the Puppy Bowl, and of course we got some good footage as well. Uh, we're very fortunate they they said our name several times on our website, and you know kind of a little bit of what we did have done. So it's been really really great for us. And he, as you know, you know people think that's all we do is save puppies, but like any business, we have to do our marketing and our promotions out there and get our name out there. Otherwise, you know the way we get money is by donations and. Uh, doing fundraisers and events, so the more I can get my name out there, like Animal Foundation of America and Power, <laughs> the more we can do. 
It, exactly. It, well, it's it's so true. It gives us. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, as a nonprofit, it feels like we're always just saying, "Please help us with this." Um, and the reason it feels like that is because that is what we're we doing. Are. You know. Um, I mean, you have a case. I know that you had met Sterling uh, a couple weeks ago. Sterling was in studio, and yeah. um, so then. Uh, we took him in, and his happy tail was just one of those things that um, it it wasn't going to heal. And so then we had to crop the tail, and he had some – he's got some interesting dental work that needs to be done. Um, he's got some extra teeth and some teeth – it's, it's a long, convoluted story. But um, – so you take a little guy like that who was already treated initially because he, he was obviously Wait, attacked. Little, little guy? Well, everyone's a little guy to me. <laughs> you know, they're 100 wait, wait a pounds. Second. We're talking about the same dog, right? <laughs> yeah, they're 100 pounds and they're little guys to me. But yeah. um, so, but he's got a great big heart. So he, um, you know, we had already treated him for the extreme, you know, because he had been attacked by another dog by, of some nature and, and he had like a lot of abrasions and scabs and sores. So we treated him for that and then we went to the tail and the tail was something that, um, I mean, there are some people out there that are like, no, you should, you know, you got to keep his tail. Like do- people won't want a dog without a tail and this and that. But I, we had to do it for him. Well, yeah, let me, let me explain to people what happy tail is because probably a lot of people don't understand Happy tail sounds like a, a fun thing, but it's not. Uh, what it is is when a dog enters, usually it's the tip of their tail, and most dogs whack their tail. So if you have an injury on the, the end of your tail, it's very difficult for a lot of dogs for that to heal because they're constantly wagging, they're constantly hitting it again, and constantly re-injuring it. So the, truly the, the easiest, the, the cheapest, and, and the quickest, and the best for the dog because that can't be comfortable to always have an open wound, is you have to you have to amputate or duck tell. Um, well, and sometimes, and it depends on how extreme it is. In his case, we don't know. It looked like it's it was possible that part of the end of the tail was bitten off, possibly okay. from the previous altercation. So, and he has he's such a happy boy. You know, I mean, there are some dogs that that just kind of whip their tail and it's it's done. This boy is consistently his tail would not stop moving and stop hitting things and it would leave everything a bloody mess literally i mean everywhere you you looked where he was i mean all over all over your clothes all over his bedding all over everything and what we do as a rescue organization is we want them to be adoptable and so I mean, how can you ask someone to adopt a dog and say, okay, but he's going to, you know, leave blood all over your house at all times? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, for me, it's even more than that because it can't be safe to have an open wound. No, um, it's going it's to hurt. Our, it's going to hurt. If you're, there's more chance of infection. So, so it's, it's, not, it's, it's not, yes, it's easier to adopt a dog that's not a bleeding mess all the time. But beyond that, the medical reasoning behind it, there, there's actually a medical reasoning because you are putting the dog at risk for infection and constantly having an open wound, which is not good. Well, uh, and you could it, wrap it, and I know, and I've tried this many times with different work. dogs, and it's like you wrap it, it's gone in 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah. And and Sterling is a boy that he's he's always bouncing all over the place. Like just when I tried taking off his... Um, the the wrap around his leg um, where the IV was, it's like, okay, that took me half an hour because he was like, yeah. beep, 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 you know, bouncing all over the place. And it's like, okay, I'm just trying to take this off. I'm not trying to do anything else. Um, so, yeah, it is referred to as happy tail, but it can't be, it can't make the dog very happy. I mean, it's got to be extremely painful when you think about it. They do have an open wound that is bleeding and it's like no amount of antibiotics is going to help that. It's not going to change it. You know, it's like you give them the antibiotics to keep it from getting infectious, but it's not going to cause it to heal. And he literally had, his tail was so severe. I mean, there was there was no skin on a huge part of his, of his tail. No. Um, so, and it's so funny, like now with his cone... His body, he has a, he looks like a boxer now. If you look at him from the back, he just, his body and his tail, he looks like a, a boxer boy, except for he has this great big, 
you know, bulldog head. So, <laughs> but my point is, it's that, you know, you treat him for one scenario. So you, I, you know, you treat him for the wounds, you treat him for things like that. And then suddenly then you have a whole another procedure that oh, wait. even docking the tail requires, you know, you got to do blood work to make sure that he can, he can manage going under anesthesia. Um, then we actually we did we did a few other things that I mean his teeth is odd and stuff like that. So then suddenly you're like, okay, well we had a certain budget for his medical, and then now this was needed, and it was for you know in the, in his best interest. And then it's like, okay, well that's another thousand dollars later. And so that is why rescue groups we're always trying to get our name out there, and we're always trying to talk about what we're doing because we have things such as this where it's like. Even though my veterinarian, she's absolutely amazing, and her whole group and staff, they're great, Dr. Wise and Westlake. Um, so, and, and they well, give well, us... Yeah, absolutely, but fundraising alone, just it's the short of it, fundraising alone is a, is a second job. I mean, it, it's, it's constant because you are constant. We are constantly, you know, have bills that come at us every single day, whether it's, you know, and you might think it sounds funny, but a cell phone bill or... You know, the electrical bill for the house that the dogs are in right now. You know, those everything adds up. And, you know, so we get well, donations. thousands of dollars very, very quickly. Very quickly. And, and people don't realize that because without our cell phones or our Internet or, or you know, and let alone the care of the dogs, which are always, if never what you think it is, it's always more because these animals are in the shelter. So they come with a, you know, compound amount of, of injuries or illnesses or, I mean, even if it's a simple Giardia case, you know, it's still... Yeah, it's still panic here or Metrozenadol, you know, it's like, yep. okay, I mean, all Everything of that costs money. Up. Exactly. So, oh, but I didn't get to the story about my girl Sugar, and she's here with me in studio today, so I want to tell you about the my personal situation that happened with, with my own little girl. Uh, so we'll talk about that as soon as we get back from commercial break. You're listening to Rescue Radio on CRN Digital Talk. Hi folks, this is Larry Minetti, and many of you out there suffer from skin problems. Well, I've been telling you for months how to solve that problem. It's called Herpanacin. It's the most unique and effective formula on the market. It cleans your skin from the inside out. It gets rid of all kinds of acne on your back, your neck, your face, so you can feel and you could look like a movie star. Herpanacin is a natural supplement. It was created by Dr. Wayne Diamond and his staff, and trust me, this really works. I've been on these supplements for over a year now and never had a problem. There is no reason in the world to wake up and be afraid to look in the mirror. You trust Larry. Just try it. Call 888-467-4200. 467 4200. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. Really? Yeah. They found me a place for what she could afford, and it was magnificent. We're now very confident that she's safe, and they just helped every step of the way, and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, call a place for mom. This is a free service, and you can trust them to help you. If you're struggling to find reliable senior living information for your mom or dad, then call or go online to get the free help you need during this turbulent time. Call now, 800-471-5173, 800-471-5173. Let me take just a moment or two, if I may, and talk about a great place to eat. That's right, for you folks anywhere in the eastern San Fernando Valley, drop in to Bob's Big Boys. That's right, in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. Now, everybody remembers the name Bob's. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. And little old Bob carrying the hamburger in his checkered overalls is the same Bob that you remember from back through the years. And, of course, if you want to go in for a great lunch, remember their classic burger. 
the original double-deck hamburger combination. Delicious 100% pure ground beef in two patties with American cheese, lettuce, and our famous big boy special sauce. The name is Bob, and I think when you go in, you'll say, by golly, I'm sure glad that I found this restaurant because it's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They've got all kinds of things, and all you have to do is remember. Bob's Big Boy in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. It's a great place to eat. Welcome back to Rescue Radio on CRN Digital Talk. So we got oh, off. You, you were talking about your girl, your girl sugar? Yeah, my, my girl sugar. She's she's my little babe. I'll go ahead and let's bring her up here so people can see her. If they're, look at them. Oh, my baby. Mwah. So my girl sugar last night gave me a scare of my life. So she's my she's my senior shit too. Um she's you know, we've gone through trials and tribulations together. She's she's had a heart murmur, an extreme heart murmur since she was just a pup. Um and so I mean at one point in her life she had um she had a heart attack. Thankfully she actually had the heart attack in the vet's office. Um and we were able to bring her back, which less than like 1% of dogs actually come back from, from uh, heart attacks. Um, and then after that, uh, very common in Shih Tzus, she had one of her eyes had um, come out. And so she, we had to surgically remove it. So we've gone through a lot, Sugar and I. Um, Poor girl. Yeah, she's, I mean, she's my little senior girl, but she's, I mean, you wouldn't even know it to, to, to see her. I mean, she's got the spirit of a puppy. And uh, so she's absolutely amazing and just one of just my all time loves is my girl sugar. And so last night I was um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to bed early. I put all the dogs to bed early. It was like, you know what? I, I really need to sleep. I need to like recoup and, and get ready for for, you know, just like relax. Right. Because I have a number of things going on this weekend. So I'm like, all right. Uh, so, I mean, it was early, it's eight o'clock and I'm, you know, all getting ready to cuddle up to, to bed. And so Suge decides, cause she likes to hide under the bed. And so between the doggy bed and the, the posters in my bed, she, she likes to go underneath there. And just as she went to go underneath there, I heard this noise that I've never heard her make before. And it was this crying, squealing, yelling, yelping kind of noise. And, um, and sugar, I mean, she's, she's a shih tzu, but she's small. She's five pounds. I mean, she's a tiny little girl. And, uh, and so I, I look down and I see her body is completely stiff. Like she's like, not moving and, and she's, well, she's no longer making any noise. Right. And I'm like, okay, panic mode, like to the max, like. I jump up out of bed. I go over there. I pull the bed out. I, I pull her out and I'm cuddling her. And then I realize like she's actually, she's she doesn't appear to be breathing. So I'm like breathing into her mouth. Like what the heck is going on? Um, and so, and again, there, I mean, there's nothing. There's no response. And so I'm, I'm carting her up, you know, on my way to rush to the emergency room because I'm like, what the heck's going on here? And then she's, then I felt her body, her body loosened up. Like she started breathing again. And, um, and I was like, but she was very incoherent and she was just kind of in a daze and she, and her eyes, like she, her eyes, her eye wasn't really responsive. <laughs> like she wasn't seeing me. And I have to say, I mean, we deal in animal rescue all the time. And of course I love every animal that comes into my, into my rescue. But to have this happen to me last night with her sent me into such a, like, I mean, in this situation, the way I basically, like, how I handle things, I'm very calm during it. It's afterwards that I have I have a complete panic and anxiety attack. Um, but then she's, like, she started to come to. She started to be okay. Like, I was trying to get the lights on, you know, because it's, like, I mean, I was, we were crawling into bed. And so, I mean, we've ran blood work. We've tried to see what happened. And it's really, it, it's one of those things. I mean, she appears to be fine today. But we don't know, and, and a lot of people don't understand, it's very, very rare for a dog to ever have a stroke. So it was like, was it a seizure? I don't know. Was it, um, was it some kind of anxiety attack? Did she, did she pinch a nerve in her neck, or did she, like, what exactly? Does she have a history of, she have a history of seizures? 
she she's never to my knowledge she's I've never seen her have a seizure and it's not but I mean she is I mean she's getting up there I mean she's an older girl but yeah. um but it's not something that we've ever but we did we bl- did blood work and we're like okay do we need to put her on some kind of anti seizure medic like what happened was it was it just like some kind of panic attack did she did she go to go under and something between the bed did she hit her head did she so. It's like, okay, well, we did X. I mean, it's like we did x rays of the brain. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, short of doing like um, an, M- an MRI in the middle of the night last night, it was like, okay, but she's, I mean, at first she was very incoherent and she wasn't, yeah. you know, she wasn't responsive and she wasn't moving around. Um, but then about maybe like half an hour, an hour later, then, I mean, and today there's no sign of it. So I'm like, okay, I'm sticking with this. But, now I'm like I'm so panicked about it. Like so she's now, going everywhere with you. Now. Oh yeah, she's not allowed out of my sight. So she's here with me in studio today. I mean, but, she's a good girl. She's she's sitting here on my lap. So it's like okay, just. Like. I, I I think this is a good segue. You know, I was thinking right now. I'm listening to this because I you know I personally have seven dogs of my own. I live on two acres, so I can have seven dogs. Mm-hmm. I live out in the country, so it's legal. Nobody needs to be calling on me. Right. Um, but. When we have dogs and we've rescued them from very young ages, I want to hear. I want to hear about this, yes. Chad, and um, I want you to talk to me more about break. your pets as soon as we get back from our commercial break. You're experiencing pain, back pain, shoulder, elbow, or hand pain, pain from a sports injury. If so, schedule a visit with Dr. Michael Sheps, the leading expert in laser therapy for pain management. Call 310-873-4422 or go to drsheps.com. Experience Epic T, the breakthrough laser therapy system that Dr. Sheps developed to make you pain-free in less time. Laser therapy is a non-invasive, safe, and effective in-office procedure that penetrates deep into your skin without damaging the tissue. It perfectly targets areas of pain to promote fast, natural healing. Relax your muscles ease muscle spasms, joint stiffness, and arthritis pain while increasing blood circulation. For over 25 years, Dr. Sheps has helped Olympic athletes and sports enthusiasts alike get back in the game. Schedule your visit with Dr. Sheps at his Brentwood office in California. Call 310-873-4422 or visit drsheps.com. That's D-R-S-H-E-P-S.com, 310-873-4422. I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Attention men who've taken Androgel or any other testosterone therapy products. Androgel or other low-T products have been linked to heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, even death. Scientific studies indicate that the use of testosterone therapy products may double a man's risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one took Androgel or a testosterone therapy product and suffered from a heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or any other cardiac event, you might be entitled to financial compensation. You have rights, and you need to let us fight for your rights. And you pay no fees unless we win. So call the Tort Attorneys right now. 800-557-7921. 800-557-7921. That's 800-557-7921. Cases may be referred to participating law firms in your jurisdiction. CRN travelers relax at the beautiful Fountain Grove Inn and Conference Center in Santa Rosa, California. Come to quality and come to luxury. Experience the newly renovated guest rooms. They're generously sized and they're decorated in the Tuscan tradition. They have great, incredible pillow top mattresses, luxurious linens, and down fill comforters. The Fountain Grove Inn also offers complimentary Wi Fi and internet access. There's warm cookies and coffee every evening in the hotel lobby, and you can visit the newly remodeled Equus Restaurant and Equus Lounge with its new wine bar. It's the ideal place to relax and enjoy a glass of wine and watch our What's Cooking on Wine show on CRN with host Larry Van Alst on Wednesdays. It's the Fountain Grove Inn, Hotel, and Conference Center located in the heart of Sonoma Wine Country. It's easily located in Santa Rosa off the 101 Fountain Grove Parkway exit. Call 707-578-6101. That's 707-578-6101 or visit FountainGroveIn.com. Are you looking to increase the number of calls you receive at your business? Well, CRN Talk is introducing a new way for customers to reach you without having to remember your phone number or web address. Customers simply dial pound 250 from their mobile phones to say your business name. That's it. 
They'll be directed immediately to your phone line and receive a text message with a link to your website and phone number. It's that easy. It works so well that we're using it in this commercial. To sign up, dial pound 250 and say, help my business. That's pound 250, help my business. The Doug Steffen Good Day program, early morning radio, and I guess it is radio, although it's radio on TV because this is CRN Digital Talk. You can find out what's going on in the world. We talk about the issues of the day, the events of the day, the people that people are talking about. We have an interesting way of looking at the news and having a little fun with the issues. So if you want to have some fun, learn a few things, and get up on the right side of the world, Doug Steffen's Good Day program, weekday mornings, 2 to 7 a.m. on CRN Digital Talk. Welcome back to Rescue Radio on CRN Digital Talk. So, so yeah, before we before we went to commercial break, I was I was talking about um, how our personal rescue animals that we have, you know, we we have had them most of them for for quite a long time. Like your girl Sugar, you've had for a very long time, uh, and and we have the luxury of knowing, you know, the history and what they've gone through with us, which is helpful when you go to the vet. So now take rescue and what we do. We go into shelters, we go in, you know, we get some owner surrenders, but we take animals that we don't know anything about. And we don't know their their history, we don't know what they've gone through behaviorally or medically. And so it's very hard. And that ties me into a dog that we recently rescued. We've had him about two weeks. Um, his name's Cody, a beautiful uh, multi-mix. Uh, dog that was saved, or I should say bought, from a store close to our Thousand Oaks location. Okay, I know which um, one you're talking about. <laughs> for, for lack of a better word, he's a puppy mill dog. Right. Um, beautiful dog. Beautiful. Uh, we received a call from that store and the owners asking us to take the animal in um, to, to surrender it to us because he was aggressively biting people. Um, they've had him since he was like eight weeks old, and and they don't know what what has gone. He's now almost two, and he he'll be very sweet for a while, and then he goes Cujo on you, literally Cujo. Okay, and you have no idea. So we take him in, and we're thinking, okay, first easiest thing, trial and error. You know, we're not going to go run a, a hundred tests because that would just cost us an arm mm-hmm. and a leg. Mm-hmm. So we think behavioral modification. For us, one of the behavioral modifications that we do, especially when a dog is aggressive or fear aggression, is that we take that edge off. And you can do that with putting them on Prozac or Xanax, and it just takes it, it, it calms the sensors in the brain down. Right. So Prozac takes about three weeks to really kick into the system. And then you'll usually, by a month, you'll start seeing a really good progress like they level in the behavior. Mm-hmm. And they level out, and everything calms down. And a lot of dogs you're able to get off, and some just because of what they've gone through or they were born that way, you know, just like people, sometimes they need medication for the right. rest of their life. Right, So we, we started there. Um, actually, the previous owner had started there before we ever got him. It was about three weeks when we got him. He was on Prozac. No change. A month, no change. So then he's with us at our rescue, and we notice that he is urinating some frank blood. What that means oh. is it's, it's fresh blood. Yeah. Um, and, and a few days before that, he started literally becoming Ucho again. Before that, no problem. Sweet as can be. But like two days before the Frank blood in his urine, he was crazy going nuts at the exercise pen we had him in. There was only one okay. person he allowed allow pick him up. Other than that, he was he wanted to rip your neck off. Okay. And we're like, okay. So immediately we took him to the doctor, and he we're finding that he probably has an autoimmune issue that is causing it, it's not kidney stones anything like that but it's something that's causing him to basically internally bleed so he's so probably he's been in for the past for the past two years he's probably been in pain oh, <laughs> so every that. time yeah which is very sad but it, it goes to show what we do every day we walk in we have these animals and you, you start with one thing you think it's behavior slowly, and yeah, then it turns just, into something else that could be yeah so, so we're. St- I mean, we've had him on medication for a little while, for about a week now. For the most part, he's been good. He had a little episode the other day where he became a little cujo again. Um, so we we're still have to run tests. We still have to get him on the medication, make sure it stays in his system, and see 
uh, what's going it was fully what's going on. We ran some blood tests, but it it just goes to show that what we do, we never know what we're walking into. Um, you know, people might think because we do radio and that we should be here on time. Life happens. We're dealing with <laughs> animals' lives. It's not like we're just, you know, punching a clock. and Well, it's and real time, and something can happen, and you're like, if I don't deal with this right yeah. now, and that's actually what happened because I have, I have a little puppy with me in studio, and it was just crying. And so then I was like, okay, and I was trying to take care of it as I'm driving to get here, and then it's like, well, wait a second. Like, I, I fed it early. I, I fed this little girl early so that she could try to make sure she, she got food and she, she went potty. To to but she needed to go to the bathroom. And she was crying. And she's she didn't want to go, like, in her bed. And so then it's yeah. like, I can't help her go in the car as we're moving. I mean, of course, I have newspaper in my car. I have puppy pads in my car. I mean, that's something every rescuer tends to have in their back seat, right? Yeah. So, but I can't, you know, to get it out and to make it safe for her to feel comfortable to go to the bathroom. And then, of course, I mean, after they go to the bathroom, puppy poop isn't the most pleasant smelly thing. <laughs> so then it's like, okay, wrap it up. Let's get in the trash can and let's get in the studio. So these are things that happen with us, like, every single day. And it's constantly changing. And I, I think with my with my personal girl when that happened to me last night, I think it sent to it like it sent me to I couldn't believe how panicked I was. And like after the fact, because I always like in the moment, I'm like, okay, let's see. She's not breathing. Let's make sure. Let's get her some oxygen in there. That's it. And I'm boom, boom, boom. And then afterwards, I was shaking so bad. I, I just, I couldn't even believe how bad, like, I, I felt like I was going to... And then people be, wonder why we drink at night. Right? I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, and then all through the night, I was so panicked. There was no, and she sleeps like right next to me, but, and she's sleeping so Any soundly. little move would wake you up. Any little noise would wake you yeah. up. Or the fact that she wasn't making a noise. I was like, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 you okay? All right, good. All right, just wanted to check. You know, so she's probably exhausted today. I know I am. I'm like, all right, let's just, you know, let's get through this. So, um, so then this morning I was, I had already planned on bringing one of the one of the bucket pups, the parket bucket pups in, and then I'm like, yeah, but I can't leave my girl Shug. So I'm like, come on, Shug, let's go. And I call her Sheriff Shug. She's always good with pups. She's been around the rescue dogs for you know forever. So. Um, so she's fantastic with the, I mean, I don't worry about her with any other dogs and, and the pup has already had its first set of vaccines. So, um, so it's like, so okay. Tell me, so tell me about these bucket pups as you call them. So, yeah. So they're the park bucket pups. Um, so it was one of those things we have about 60 seconds, but, um, so, you know, I've, I've actually had recently four sets of bucket pups that randomly have been put in the same kind of like party bucket. Um, but I, I want to talk more about this little girl. So, I mean, it was really a group effort between a number of different people and we, we got the, the pups back, um, and over to, uh, to Thousand Oaks and I'll talk to you about more about the bucket pups as soon as we come back. But I've got one of these precious little girls. Her name's Iris after Iris, who's the one who interceded and helped them in the first place. Um, and so we'll talk more about Iris and her siblings as soon as we return. You're listening to Rescue Radio on CRN Digital Talk. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a non organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now. 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. 
Are you nearing eligibility for Medicare benefits? Then you know now is an important time in your life. Medicare benefits can be a complicated puzzle. You don't want to overpay for your Medicare coverage or get the wrong plan. Let Health Markets Insurance Agency help you. With one free phone call, a licensed insurance agent will help you select a Medicare plan that's right for you and your budget. If you're becoming eligible for Medicare, call today and learn how to get the most out of your benefits. 800-793-1960. 800-793-1960. Health Markets Insurance Agency is the DBA or assumed name of InSphere Insurance Solutions, Inc., which is an authorized insurance agency in all 50 states in the District of Columbia. Not all agents are licensed to sell all products. Service and product availability varies by state. Call 800-793-1960. 800-793-1960. Welcome back to Rescue Radio on CRN Digital Talk. So I'm getting overly distracted here today, but... um, (laughs) Yeah, Tell but, me about the, the, the bucket pups. Uh, so the many, bucket uh, pups. So it was a matter of, um, so Iris, she's a she's a fantastic uh, person. that She does a lot of pools, and she works with a number of different rescue groups. Um, so Iris ran across this person that had a bucket full of pups, and he said they weren't his, but he found them in the park. And so Iris interceded, and she's like, get Christina on the phone. And there was someone else there, Sal Valampena. He was there with Iris. And so he's texting me. And then Iris is calling someone. It was this big, like, okay, let's just someone, you know, like, let's just get in touch with Christina. Like, we know Christina will take these pups. Don't let them go into the shelter. Because um, because very often with these small puppies, the shelters are like, oh, well, we want puppies. We can adopt out puppies. Um, yeah, but once those puppies go into the shelter system, they get sick. I mean, it's very, very often that they get sick. I mean, you have URIs, but other extreme things. I mean, I mean, there's Giardia, which a lot of shelters so, so, have. So let's go with let's go with that train of thought because because I, it, that just aggravates me that you said that because it's the truth. Um, and I'll tell you why it aggravates me because because for me, a shelter's job is to take care of the animals that come in. Yes. And because there has been such a push from rescue organizations and the whole no-kill movement, you know, city and county shelters have began to act as though more of a rescue than they have a county or a city shelter. And what I mean by that is that I'm glad they want... And they there are benefits. To, there are benefits to that. There mm-hmm. are benefits. I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about it, mm-hmm. but it frustrates me when you get a shelter that makes comments like that because I've heard it many, many times um, with shelters I deal with uh, as well that they like to keep certain dogs in there because, you know, they can adopt them out. Mm-hmm. Well, you are already have a contract with the city or shelter, you're, uh, the city or county you're in, so you're already getting paid because you're usually provided money by taxpayers such right. as myself and you. Mm-hmm. So your job is just to take care of the animals that you have get in not to actually go out and seek puppies and right. not that they do but it just aggravates well me i want to say something that. very very and, I, and i'm not going to mention the shelter because i don't want anyone else to get upset or or knock the shelter or anything like that um and i know they have rules but um when they have a medical now these puppies when you have puppies this young they need to be in the medical ward I mean, they can't be on the general run. And when your medical run is completely full, you're at capacity. You have extra kennels outside of your medical ward that are along the wall because your medical is overflowing. And the rescue organizations that are there are trying to help pull your medical, right? Because your medical is is brimming. I mean, you're going to start euthanizing any second because your your shelter is at capacity. Your medical ward is beyond capacity. And then you say, well, we need these puppies, well, no, you don't need these puppies because what's going to exactly. happen to these puppies? And you're going to have to euthanize someone else yes. to take in these puppies and yes. to have space for these four puppies. So, no, that's not right. And so... Um, and I think that's what aggravates me is there is there has been a change, at least on that mentality. I mean, I'm glad the shelters have begun to really want to see their dogs get out and really but the rescue groups look you take other dogs that are unadoptable dogs i take dogs that are unadoptable dogs like i have i have a little group of misfits um and it's like okay well that's what i have because 
um, the shelter couldn't do. So it's like, all right, I mean, allow the rescue groups to have some of the cute. I mean, not that allow or don't allow, but this is a situation. It's really it in the best matter. interest. It shouldn't the matter. Shelter, and if a rescue wants to pull a dog, and they're a good rescue, and they've been vetted, let them pull a dog. Any dog. You think, any dog, any dog, any cat, any, any kitten, any whatever you have, because, yeah. um, I mean, the thing is, so. So she she's like, no, I'm taking these, and and they were in a rush to get a hold of me because they're like, I mean, am I even in the country? You know what I mean? They're like, I know yeah. Christina will take care of these pups, but get her on the phone. And so, uh, so then I just, you know, they I was in the middle of fifty different things, and they got a simple reply of just yes. And then it was a matter of like, okay, from the shelter and where they were, how to get them from there to me. So yeah. and it's quite a schlep from where they're at and where I am. And so it's like, okay, from there. And I'm not saying the shelter again. From there, 2,000 Oaks. And so then, um, so Sal drives him up to Sherman Oaks. Then I meet him in Sherman Oaks. And then we bring him back. And then, of course, they were we, they were seen by uh, Dr. Wyan Westlake, which he's amazing. Um, and so, you know, they checked out. They're healthy. Everything's good. So we got them their... They're about eight weeks old, so we got them their first set of vaccinations and, you know, got them a dewormer. We did, you know, basic, you know, the basic pup, puppy test. We did a fecal, yep. make sure that everything's clean there. Um, but the reality is now they're with me in my home and they are, they're free of disease. And every shelter, no matter how clean they try to be, um, there is disease there. And, I mean, many times, and I've seen the shelters where you, you get puppies and then you've got a batch of parvo puppies. And... Yep. It doesn't just go away. I mean, Parvo is there for a year. So if you've got puppies and they go in that environment, that's there for a good year, Um, even with cleaning. So it's very important that that everything is kept clean. And so, um, I mean, aside from, you know, the, the easy things like... I mean, they're easy to treat, but they're not the funnest to, to be around if they have Giardia or Coccidia or one of those things, oh, which is yeah, very... No. It runs rapid in every shelter. Um so I have little Iris here, and she's just, I did post a picture on our Facebook page, and so I'll get, like, we're going to commercial break, but if you look at the screen. <laughs> we're always screen, going to commercial break. Yeah. We just talk too much. But if you're, if you're online and you're on Sierra, and, um, then you can see little Iris. So I named her after Iris, which she's the one who interceded initially. Um, so we got little Iris here, eight-week-old Shih Tzu puppy. And, um, and we'll talk more when we get back. You're listening to Rescue Radio on CRN Digital Talk. As we are all aware, restaurants and celebrity chefs come and go. But one restaurant is constant, El Cholo. Hi, this is Larry Elder. Since 1923, the original El Cholo on Western Avenue and those in La Habra, Santa Monica, downtown L.A., Anaheim Hills, and the latest Corona Del Mar have served millions of loyal fans and multiple generations. If you've dined there, you know the reason why. It's those fresh green corn tamales, Carmen's historic nachos, the margaritas, and so much more. Treat yourself and dine at a restaurant you really want to go to, not one where you're supposed to go to. El Cholo. Cholo. I know I do. Do you have really pure water? Maybe not if you're drinking bottled water. Bottled water has some dirty little secrets. Plastic bottles come from oil products. The five-gallon polycarbonate jugs contain bisphenol A, a synthetic estrogen that has raised health concerns. Bottled water dispensers quickly develop algae and bacteria and should be sanitized regularly. Have you ever cleaned your water dispenser? Are you drinking water containing algae and bacteria and synthetic estrogen? Now the good news. Pure water science can replace that dirty, outdated bottled water cooler with a high-tech water purification system. System. The Pure Water Science System features a stainless steel tank that constantly monitors water quality to guarantee your water is pure. It alerts you when service or filter changes are needed. Multi-stage purification removes organic and inorganic contaminants, and the patented self-sanitizing feature eliminates algae and bacteria while adding oxygen to your water. It costs less than bottled water without the bottled water hassle. No more bottles to lift. Just sanitize delicious water, hot or cold, from Pure Water Science. Call 818-502-4191. 818-502-4191. 
I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Attention men who've taken Androgel or any other testosterone therapy products. Androgel or other low-T products have been linked to heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, even death. Scientific studies indicate that the use of testosterone therapy products may double a man's risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one took Androgel or a testosterone therapy product and suffered from a heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or any other cardiac event, you might be entitled to financial compensation. You have rights, and you need to let us fight for your rights. And you pay no fees unless we win. So call the Tort Attorneys right now. 800-557-7921. 800-557-7921. That's 800-557-7921. Cases may be referred to participating law firms in your jurisdiction. Are you looking to increase the number of calls you receive at your business? Well, CRM Talk is introducing a new way for customers to reach you without having to remember your phone number or web address. Customers simply dial pound 250 from their mobile phones to say your business name. That's it. They'll be directed immediately to your phone line and receive a text message with a link to your website and phone number. It's that easy. It works so well that we're using it in this commercial. To sign up, dial pound 250 and say, help my business. That's pound 250, help my business. Welcome back to Rescue Radio on CRN Digital Talk. So we're in our we're in our final segment already. Yeah, it, it happens quickly. You know, we start talking about pups or personal things. You know, it happens every week. So it um, does. So, so what do you have coming up this this week? So this week, let's see. Um, well, I mean, I'm just I, everyone's. I am good right now. <laughs> We've got no scut, no surgery scheduled. Nothing. Nothing crazy with that. We've just got pups, and we're just trying to um, we're just trying to find everyone homes now. What's going on with you this week? Uh, well, tomorrow I'm actually going to be watching the Puppy Bowl. Starts at 3 p.m. to see my at least the commercials um, in the intro to Puppy Bowl. Where our dogs aren't actually in the, the game itself, but we are in the uh, sponsor commercials for Subaru and Pedigrees. I want to see that. I'm excited about that. Um, I have a couple. Of, you know, you know how it is when you see them on TV. You're like, hey, I oh, just those are my babies. <laughs> yeah, those are my kids. You know, that's part of my family. And then you know, we we also have uh, I would say about 30 puppies right now in foster, in different fosters. So got like two sets coming up to be spayed and neutered this coming week, which then they'll be uh, ready for adoption uh, right before Valentine's Day, which we don't advocate, you know, you adopting a, a dog for your loved ones. You know, you always need to bring them in because, uh, you know, you, we always make sure everybody is on board when there's an adoption. So no surprises for Valentine's Day people out there. I know, we don't, right? We don't want that. Um, you know, that has been white, ch- you know, except children. They don't, they don't have to be on board. They really don't have a choice, but <laughs> <laughs> mom and dad. Unless they're scheduled to pick up the poop, I guess. That's true. Well, even then, it, it never happens. I have an eight-year-old. <laughs> you know, everybody who says, oh, I'm going to teach my child responsibility. No, you're going to end up picking up the poop. So just, just learn that. <laughs> kids are kids. Let them be kids. I mean, we all have chores, but, you know, kids forget. So, but um, other than that, it's, it's, uh, at this moment, it's fairly calm for my life. Um, but we do have our Ties and Tails Gala coming up in March, so we're preparing for that, which I hope you will be coming. Oh, absolutely. Um, no, it was yep. fabulous last year. And that's in March, what time, what day, March? March 19th. March 19th at Moore Park Country Club. And you can get tickets on Ticketmaster or on your website? Nope. On our uh, TiesandTails.org, which is Ties, T-I-E-S and A-N-D, Tells, T-A-I-L-S dot org, org, or you can just go to my website, org as well. And you are Christina Hackett, correct? Yes, Christina Hackett. I'm Animal Foundation of America, so you can like me on Facebook. And, of course, uh, you're Paul Works, so you're at PaulWorks.org, or you're also on Facebook. And we have Rescue Radio, so you can like us on Facebook as well for Rescue Radio. And yes. so I posted a few pictures, so there are some pictures up, so you can see beautiful Iris. Uh, Iris is the the bucket, um, the the park bucket puppy. Um, she has had her first set of vaccines, so we just wait. We give it a good ten days before they're available for adoption to make sure there's no kind of reaction or anything like 
Oh, she's giving me kisses. <laughs> <laughs> well, people people don't realize, so just real quick on that, I don't know how many seconds I have, but we always wait 10, 10 to 14 days because it's been statistically proven that after they get their first set of shots, which has the Parvo immune vaccine in it, um, they can actually, if they have it in their, if their system. If it's dormant, it, it can been, bring it live. It can bring it live, and it's within 10 days of the vaccine. So I've had puppies that on the 10th day they broke with Parvo. Boo. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you think you're in the clear on that 10th day, and then all of a sudden you're you like, got nasty oh. poop. Yeah. So on that note, since we're talking about poop, well, I just want to say I'm so thankful that I've got my girl in studio today, my girl Sugar. She's she's absolutely amazing, and I'm thankful she's here with me, and I'm thankful for her every day. And yeah. um, and then I'm I appreciate you calling in today, Chad. And we <laughs> should both be in studio next week. Uh, yes, you and, should. <laughs> and I'll bring in some more of the the park bucket puppies. But uh, so, and thank you everyone out there who's listening. You're listening to Rescue Radio on CRN Digital Talk. Which is most important because that was your theme. Are you tired of hearing your favorite talk radio show sound like this? What if you could hear your favorite shows in crystal clear, high-definition digital sound? Well, with CRN Digital Talk Radio's six channels of high-definition radio, you can now hear all of your favorite hosts like you've never heard them before.